everyone. Good Monday morning and happy Labor Day to you and yours. What a 24 hours it has been in the weather world across Northeast Ohio. Uh, we were not expecting a tornado to even be remotely possible on Sunday. Uh, in my career, I have very rarely seen a tornado occur in the kind of environment that we had uh, yesterday. But, you know, the 1 in 100 chance is not a 0 in 100 chance. And, uh, yeah, we did indeed uh, had a, have a tornado and we had massive flooding and it just turned into a real mess Sunday evening. Wanted to start out this evening with... Uh, some video here. This is, of course, from the Boardman area. Some uh, drone footage here uh, sent to us from uh, Alex, sh uh, s showing some of the the damage to some of the businesses in a fairly narrow path in the uh, Boardman area. A lot of this was shingle and roof damage, uh, but we did have some uh, scattered reports of uh, other problems as well uh, across uh, the 224 corridor. Uh, it was not only the uh, tornadic activity, but the flooding as well. But in the meantime. Wanted to uh, talk about where uh, this uh, tornado did touch down. Uh, to get your bearings here, we're in Boardman. This is Southern Boulevard. Over here is Market Street. 224 is up here. And uh, California Avenue, York Avenue. Uh, this is where it touched down. It was only on the ground for 125 yards. You know, a few hundred feet. That was about it. Uh, the width of the tornado was 15 yards. So this was a small EF0 tornado with winds of around 80 miles per hour. EF0 tornadoes are definitely the most common tornado, not only here locally, but across the United States as well. They happen much more frequently than those higher end EF3s, EF4s, EF5s. Those are actually quite rare, especially around here. Uh, EF0 though, that is our most common tornado type in Northeast Ohio and Western PA. Now this map only plots up tornadic activity from 1950 to 2019, but it gives you a sense as to where the hot spots are across our TV viewing area. And actually this part of Mahoning County kind of the eastern part of Mahoning, right around uh, Boardman to Poland, uh, has been fairly untouched by tornadic activity in the last couple of decades. Our last Mahoning County tornado overall was in the western and central part of the county, uh, from Ellsworth over to Canfield back in 2014. So it's been eight years since we've had a tornado in Mahoning County. But yeah, EF0 is what the uh, National Weather Service found. Uh, they actually did not appear on site today. Uh, kind of unusual. Usually a survey team is sent out by the National Weather Service office and they survey the damage and make a rating based on that. They made this assessment based on the drone footage that uh, they saw and could see what kind of damage occurred and were able to uh, estimate the winds and hence the uh, the level or the, uh, the, the rating of the tornado as an EF0. All right, of course, lots and lots of siren discourse on social media, as there always is whenever we have a tornado warning and even a confirmed tornado. If you've been following me for a while, you know my stance on this. I don't think we should tear down the sirens. They can continue to be there, but they are a problem uh, because they are very unreliable. They're outdated. Uh, they oftentimes are set off when they shouldn't and not set off when they should. Um, and it's 2022. Most of the siren technology dates back to World War II. We can do a lot better. 2022. Uh, no weather radio. Inexpensive. Pick one up at, uh, at Walmart and many other places. Uh, I know the NOAA weather radio kind of penetration in our part of the country is not real high. It's much more common to have a weather radio in, the, in your home or your business in Alabama. Places like that. But even here, I would recommend one. They're not that expensive. 30 bucks. Um, of course, the Storm Tracker 21 app. I've gotten a lot of questions about notifications. Hey, I got the notification for the flood warning, but not the tornado warning. Well, don't forget, these push notifications are by default geared towards where you are, um, your GPS location. So if you're not in the warning polygon, uh, then you're not likely, whether you're using our app or any other uh, weather app for that matter, you're not likely to get the alert if you're not in the warning polygon. Not all of Mahoning County was in the tornado warning. In fact, most of the county was not in the tornado warning Sunday evening. Uh, a much bigger area of Mahoning County was put under the flood warning, the flash flood warning, so more people got that alert for sure. Make sure WIA, wireless, wireless emergency alerts, is turned on on your mobile device. And, of course, uh, Chris Serenelli had you covered last night uh, during the 6 o'clock newscast with live coverage. I was on my way home from the fair when the tornado warning was issued and kind of was out of pocket because I was in my car and then by the time I got home, uh, the tornado warning had expired. But uh, yeah, the damage was done and flooding was certainly the other big story aside from 
the uh, tornadic activity. These are some radar estimates from last evening. And, you know, some parts of the Boardman area had four plus inches worth of rain. These are the radar estimates, but I've seen pictures of rain gauges and, and other reports suggesting that uh, those uh, radar estimates are on the money. All right, let's talk climate change. Whenever we have a big ticket weather event, uh, we like to talk about perhaps a link to the changing climate. Uh, we've had a lot of these high end flooding events, not only here locally of late, but just in the last couple of months, we've had enormous flooding problems in some major cities in the US, St. Louis, Dallas, uh, many other places as well. And can you say that climate change caused directly each of those individu individual events? No, that would not be an accurate way to depict this. What we can say though, with absolute certainty is that climate change is real, it's happening, it's impacting weather patterns across the, uh, across the globe, and the warmer atmosphere loads the dice, or it increases the odds of any fairly routine weather event turning extreme. If you've been following me for a while, you know the analogy I like to use is uh, baseball in the 1990s. Home runs flying out of ballparks everywhere. Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire, Barry Bonds. Home run records were shattered in the late 90s. Turns out all those guys were on steroids. And because they were on steroids, any at-bat had a higher chance of ending in a home run. Now, they would have hit some of those home runs anyway. Some of these flooding events would have happened anyway. But the chance of any one pitch being hit out of the ballpark or any one event turning extreme in terms of weather is higher because the atmosphere is basically on steroids. It's a lot warmer and a lot more moist than it used to be. All right. That being said, boy, I can't win when it comes to forecasts. Uh, yesterday, w way overachieved. Today is underachieving big time. Uh, we have had a medium flash flood risk uh, during the second half of the day today. It just hasn't come to fruition. In fact, the radar is very quiet as of 721 this evening. And the Weather Service in Cleveland did discontinue the flood watch that was out for Trumbull and Mahoning. Pittsburgh office, as of this recording, still had one out for uh, their area of jurisdiction, which includes Columbia and Lawrence and Mercer. But I'm not real impressed with the radar at this time and could there be a renegade shower or a storm this evening yes will there be widespread problems in the same league as yesterday no that appears very unlikely at this point that being said we have a deep plume of moisture you can trace this all the way back into the tropics uh easy to kind of visualize this you know this extends all the way back through mexico and into the eastern pacific and it's all being funneled North and east, an upper low is spinning out here, and it's funneling all this deep moisture into the eastern U.S. And so while we have missed out on flooding problems today, some of our neighbors to the east have not been so lucky, and the atmosphere is really moisture-laden. Now, we're into September now. Uh, we're getting into the time of the year that dew points this high are becoming less and less common, certainly, uh, from a climatological standpoint. But it is muggy, and it's going to stay muggy for another couple of days. But uh, this stationary front will finally start moving a little bit over the next couple of days and kind of washing out. And uh, this will lead to not that many raindrops, but a passing shower is going to remain possible Tuesday and into Wednesday. Slow moving thunder shower is still going to be a possibility, but a lot of the time will be rain free and pretty uneventful. And then while Thursday may start with fog, high pressure building in means better weather at the end of the week. The dew points will come down by Wednesday and Thursday, staying kind of manageable into Friday and Saturday morning. By Saturday night into Sunday and Monday, though, the humid air is certainly going to make a comeback, and with that will come more chances for wet weather. Thanks for hanging with me on this long edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Lots to talk about on this Monday evening. I'll be back with another video Tuesday evening. Don't forget to check out my updated forecast tonight at 11, and tomorrow, after our debut today, we'll have another edition, of course, of 21 News at 5 p.m., and then you'll see me at 6. So again, thanks for watching. Have a great night.